Hello everyone, in this video I'll be showing you a Dark Urge build guide for in Baldur's Gate 3. Now I haven't seen anyone really talking about making a build this way, and I have two Dark Urge playthroughs on the go here, so I want to give some of my thoughts on this because there's a lot of versatility that can come with this. So, Sorcerer is typically the class that the Dark Urge is going to go as, it's the recommended class, and it's in the lore, it should be a a sorcerer so we're going to go with that to start and then we're going to add in the paladin so we, the paladin brings to the tables heavy armor and we're going to go a few different ways with this build so what we're going to start off with is i think oh the ancients or vengeance being the better two options here this one's going to give us a bit more single target damage whereas the oath of the ancients gives us more healing we should push towards becoming the oath breaker paladin because that brings some more synergy to some things that we can set up so I'm going to go with Oath of Vengeance. To break the Oath of Vengeance, you can take the Hag's Hair to boost your Charisma up. So for our stats, there's a few different ways we can go about doing this because we're going to be heavily into Charisma. We want our Constitution rather high. And then also we're going to be using a little bit of Dexterity for Initiative and our Strength. But the way that we're going to roll with this one is we're actually going to go all in on our Dexterity. Take that up as high as we can get it. Uh, 16. And then we'll keep the Charisma at 17 to boost that to 18 and something like that for our overall ability scores at the start. Now, what we're gonna do, I haven't seen any builds like this, but we're gonna be using a rapier and a shield, which I'll get into later on in the video, but this build can get quite powerful. So we're gonna just ride through with the paladin all the way up to level five, and uh, you can do a two level paladin to get smite, but uh, defense for the plus one armor class can be a great choice, but we can also go with dueling when you're wielding a melee weapon that is not two-handed or versatile in one hand and no weapon in the other, you deal an additional two damage with that weapon. So we can either choose between plus one armor class or uh, increased damage. So we can use a shield with this one. For the purpose of this, we'll go with that. Protection can be decent too, but I do think that it's better to go with dueling or defense. Now, for our spells to start off with, Bless is a really great one. If you don't have anyone on the team with Bless, someone has to have Bless. So take it if you don't have a Cleric that already has it. And then I think for our options, I think Searing Smite and Thunder Smite, are, it's good to have all different forms of Smite. The uh, Wrathful Smite can possibly Frighten, which will take an enemy out of combat, which is very nice. And then you can focus your efforts elsewhere. But we're going to go with these spells for our level 1. Or level 2. You also get the... Uh, Radiant Smite there as well. So we get our class actions, Frighten an Enemy, they have Disadvantage, Involve Animidity, Bane, and also Hunter's Mark. Now Hunter's Mark is actually quite good and uh, it does use a spell slot, but this does 1 to 6 damage and it gives you an additional 1 to 6 damage every time you attack it. It uses a bonus action, so you can use that ahead of attacking. And then also, if you have Rangers on your team, like a Beastmaster, it's, its summons will have an increased amount of damage to it as well. So very nice to have. Curing wound, cure wounds is not like the best heal to have, but it can be useful if you need something there. Shield of Faith is also pretty great. Plus two to armor class is always something that we want <laughs> because armor class means increased chance of hit and better defense. And for our final level one spell here, we'll go Divine Favor. Another concentration adds a one one d four of radiant damage. And for our ability score choice here, we're gonna go with ability improvement now taking our charisma up higher is kind of the focus or going higher into our dexterity um, there are some other options that we can go with like savage attacker is really nice and i'm also a really big fan of alert but getting our, our charisma up high is going to be useful here at level five we get our additional attacks so we can attack twice and so do two smites we also get our level two spells so branding smite Turn it prevents the target from turning invisible. That's really nice, especially later on into like Act Two and Three. Having the ability to stop invisibility is really good. And then also aid can be pretty decent to have as well, just because this can be upcasted, and if you have undead creatures, that can really help out. So level six paladin, we get a plus proficiency uh, to our saving throw, so we get ourselves the plus four or plus five. We use the hag's hair. And that's really nice, but at the same time, we can also take Sorcerer, <laughs> which makes this build a little bit more interesting. So, what's nice about Sorcerer, it has ability to do range damage pretty well, but you also get some good spells from the Sorcerer. So, what we're going to go with here for in terms of our cantrips, 
I really like Shock and Grasp and Ray of Frost. The ability to deal double damage with water is huge. And Friends is amazing to take if you're the face of your party, so I'd recommend having that if you're, you know, if this is your main character. I also like Mage Hand because it can have uses. Namely, throwing water bottles to set up ice and water damage. We'll deal with Firebolt just to have another option there. And then for our spells at level 1, I think that Chromatic Orb is nice because that gives us a choice of what type of damage we want to deal. And then Magic Missile can be good for a level 1 spell, but I prefer Shield, which would increase our armor class by 5 and also block the damage of Magic Missile. So we'll go with that. Finally, we get to choose our subclass. Now, the Draconic line is really great for the ability to increase armor class and give a bit more health, but since we are playing with a class with heavy armor, that's not going to benefit us as much as the Storm Sorcery. So, after you cast a level 1 spell or higher, you can fly as a bonus action without receiving opportunity attacks. That's huge. So, the ability to move around freely and not get attacked, Storm Sorcerer is pretty good. <laughs> uh, so, we'll take another level into this we're going to choose another spell and i think ice knife can be a pretty good one here so it makes a large area of ice and then you can blow that up with fire and then it eventually will create wetness on the target so you can deal double damage again which bolt not the not a great spell to take but it can be upcast if you have a good synergetic lightning team but we're going to go with ice knife there magic missile is another option just depends on your party's composition if you set up water often ice snipe is clearly superior because that's 44 damage with the double and then magic missile can be okay too like it's a good it allows you to hit targets that you may not hit otherwise so either one of those two twin spell sorry for that so twin spell gives us the option to uh use the spell on two targets when we get haste we can double haste and twin haste is probably one of the most broken things about this game Distance spell allows us to hit targets a little bit further away too, so that's a nice thing to have alongside that. And as we go into our next levels, we get the level 2 spells. So, there's a few standouts here. Scorching Ray is just straight up overall damage, and that can be really nice. I also like to go with something like Cloud of Daggers to set off, like, to in a doorway you can block enemies from going through. Enhanced ability can be decent in dialogue options to give yourself advantage on ability checks so if you're the face of the party another great thing to have but i'm a fan of scorching ray just for the damage at range you can give mirror image is also nice to set up ahead of time too for 10 turns increase your armor class by nine depends what you need more of armor class or magic and then we get ourselves quicken spell which actions that cost spells that cost an action cost a bonus action instead this is where the build gets crazy because we can do a couple smites and then we can also use Quicken Spell for just crazy amounts of burst damage because it's going to use a bonus action to allow us to cast a spell. This gets pretty wild. The Warlock with the Paladin is pretty great, but I like this one. We're going to take Minor Illusion. This is actually a very, very good cantrip. It draws the target away, and then you can steal from it, or you can draw enemies together to drop Fireball. Very effective. We also got Shatter here, which can be pretty decent as a level 2 spell slot for Thunder damage. But uh, Cloud of Daggers, Invisibility also has some pretty good options in combat, so you can you can pop that and do pull off some different uh, effects. Knock can open up treasure chests. De just depends what you need for your team. Mostly um, damage would be for mine, so I'm going to go Cloud of Daggers. It's not a bad skill to have. And then we can go for our alert here to give our plus 5 to initiative. I think that that's a really great option here because having the ability to move first is underrated especially with a burst damage class like this it can be quite effective so we're going to go with that there for level five, five spells we get level three so fireball is kind of the good one to go with or haste which we can twin haste and that gives us another action and an increase to our armor class by two and we become faster so haste is one of the most broken things in this game we're going to take that next level we'll take fireball i just think that haste is a little bit better and uh counter spell is also quite nice and lightning bolt so it's it's up to you what you need for your party's composition but we also get ourselves call lightning so at level six sorcerer we do get this extra it's a concentration so you can continue to call down lightning and that doesn't use spell slots which is very effective so i recommend something like uh, we also get sleet storm and create water so we can create water and then call lightning this gets pretty overpowered quickly also having thunder waves nice just for the pushback effect so we also get the Heart of the Storm when you cast a level 1 or higher spell as Lightning or Thunder. You create a small local storm. 
and you're resistant to lightning and thunder damage. So, quite nice. You can actually run multiple of these. Uh, lightning damage is underrated in this game. At the final level, we get a choice of a level 4 spell slot. We can go with something like Lightning Bolt if you prefer having that, but I think that Ice Storm is great because it creates icy surfaces, which knocks creatures prone. You can then cast a Fireball on it, and then another Fireball, and it'll apply wet to all the people in the range of the cloud. So that can be really nice for setting up great amounts of damage. Wall of Fire is also an option. It's pretty decent. Um, crowd Control, put a wall there. I do think that Ice Storm is a little bit better in practice, though, so we're going to go with that. Now, as we get into our gear, this is where the build really gets interesting. So, we got the Infernal Rapier here, which gives you a plus one bonus of spell save DC, and uh, mele me Melee Caster, instead of Dexterity Modifier, an affected entity adds a spell casting modifier to its attack rolls. So, we get, our, we get to add our um, Charisma score, so that's really nice. And then also with the Sentinel Shield, we get a plus three to initiative rolls and advantage on perception ability checks. So we're more likely to get the first move in battle. We're also going to be using the Helm of Baldurin, which gives you two health points at the beginning of every turn. And you get Baldurin's favor, plus one armor class and saving throws, and you can't be stunned. It's pretty great. The Shade Slayer Cloak gives you, uh, while hiding, the number of need to roll a critical hit. It's reduced by one. I do prefer the... Um, the Dark Deathstalker Mantle, which is the Dark Urge's uh, special unique item, which turns you invisible for two turns. For our armor, I do like anything that's going to be very high armor class. So the Dwarven, uh, Dwarven Splint Mail, which gives us a plus two constitution as well, is a really great choice because uh, less one, minus one piercing damage, and then our armor class is 22 with this setup. The gloves of dexterity can be good if you wanted to dump your dexterity, but uh, there's also some other gloves that we can go with, like the um, quick thing, the, I don't know, I lost some of my items on this playthrough, uh, weird glitches, but there's the, uh, the daredevil gloves, which allows you to cast can cantrips in melee range, which can be nice, and uh, there's also the gloves that allows you to cast two cantrips when you do a melee attack, so that can be quite good as well, and I like the ability to have misty step too, so that's Nice to have the Disintegrated Night Walkers there. And then also the Killer Sweetheart for unlimited criticals. And then the Gaunter Mail is a pretty decent bow to have equipped. So really that's the strategy you would be wanting to employ here is you're going to be a... You're a melee class, but you're also good at casting spells. So what you can do is you can get into melee range and you can do your smites with the Infernal Rapier here, which adds Charisma Modifier to its damage. And then on top of that, you can also cast a spell. So I always recommend starting with like a, a twinned uh, haste so you can haste yourself and someone else. That is pretty broken of, a, <laughs> of an effect to give yourself an extra action. And then you go in, do your attacks, you can drop chromatic orbs or any type of spell because you're going to be able to use your quickened spell, which turns your bonus action into an action. <laughs> so that's or a spell. So that's pretty powerful. This is what I think to be one of the strongest Dark Urge classes. I also am a fan of the Paladin Warlock. I think that that is a really great one as well. So depending on what you prefer, Warlock or Paladin, or Warlock or Sorcerer, I have guides for both of those. So thank you so much for watching. If you found this video useful, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll be getting to them as quickly as possible. Thank you so much for watching.